Hello, Ken Weller here again. Got my ANET uh, AA Plus printer here. I received it the other day, and a little bit to my surprise, there was a lot involved in putting it together. Uh, first, opened up the box, found out there were uh, no instructions with it. And I did have a little micro SD card, but nowhere on the SD card were the instructions. So I went out to the internet and did find the A8 Plus installation video. Found two of them. One of them shows the printer coming with the base part of the printer assembled and this upper part assembled and it looks like it would probably be about a 30 minute to 45 minute assembly. However, the one I received <laughs> had everything totally uh, disassembled in, in pieces. Reminded me of some of my older um, acrylic printers when I would buy those and every nut and bolt and everything. That's the way it was when I received this A-Net. So, uh, maybe it's possible to pay a little bit more and get one that's uh, semi-assembled. But, um, I didn't have a, a whole lot of problems once I found the video to kind of guide me so I didn't make any mistakes. A lot of it was pretty straightforward. I did, the only major thing I found was on my power on off switch over here the uh, two uh, screw holes in the metal had not been tapped and fortunately I have uh, metric taps and was able to tap that three millimeter threaded hole on each side so I could uh, screw that in and other than that all of the parts were there everything seemed to go together okay I did a few things a little different. One thing I'll mention on my beds, when I assemble these and put the springs in, most of the videos show putting the screw in, putting the spring on, and then putting your knob for adjusting. Uh, below the, the metal base plate and adjusting it that way. One thing I've gotten to where I do all of the time is I put the screw in then I get a nut that's three or four millimeter depending on the size of the screw and I tighten that nut down so that that screw is in a fixed position. And the reason I do that is because I've had them before where I'll make three turns with this bottom knob to adjust the level of, of the plate and the screw head will actually turn some which gives me a false um, a false indication of how much I'm adjusting so I have a little video clip that I've thrown in here that will show where I put uh, nuts on the bottom of that to hold that in place and of course I was able to print the little guy test print um, I have the glass bit on here I think it's a pretty good printer everything seemed to print well I always like when you have a larger format you almost have to go to uh, dual z-axis motors it's just a little bit too much to have that arm out there and uh, expect it to maintain uh, good accuracy and stay in alignment so um, that's a little bit about the um, Arnett A8 plus um, I think overall it's a good printer will I buy more of them uh, not if I have to go through hours of assembly um, 
the um, to be honest the Tronic CXY2 Pro is a 255 build plate and um, is large enough to run multiples of a lot of my parts and it requires a very short um, time to assemble that so I guess I'm starting to feel like my time's valuable and worth something but um, the advantage of spending a little bit of time building these a lot of times especially for uh, people that are new to 3D printers when you assemble them from scratch you learn a lot about them and um, the assembly instructions were pretty good because they did show ways of of assembling the uh, bearings and everything on here and tightening them down after they were in the track uh, you always want to do that so that those bearings when they're tightened down are in line with the uh, guide rods that they'll be riding on and I also use a little bit of this white grease and uh, I have some small containers of it and I also went to um, AutoZone and bought a big container of white grease uh, because I'll do a video on it later but these printers especially if you're running a print farm and you're expecting these things to run day in day out they're kind of like your automobile or something you you have to take care of your car you have to change the tires when they wear out you have to change the battery when it uh, starts losing charge and you have to change oil and lubricants same thing with these 3d printers there are parts on here that need to be uh, maintained and a little bit of this white grease you know even on these um, vertical threads and with the bearings will not only help the printer to run smoother but it will also extend the life of those bearings and the the threads and so forth so um, I'm definitely a firm believer in that just don't get carried away with the grease or you'll get too much on here and <laughs> dropping down into your parts when you print um, I don't know if you can see up here but I did use my modified um, um, holder for the A-nets uh, these are the ones that I put on the ET4s uh, and ET4Xs that I have so I could run these wider spools of filament and it worked very well with this one so I could print this little guy uh, with that filament so uh, all in all I think I haven't had a chance really put it through some very many test prints other than this little um, guy that came with it but I'll be testing this one out and see how it does and uh, for anyone that doesn't mind putting one together I think it'll be a good printer another thing I want to tell you about I received these the other day from Comfast and for those of you that have been following me on the uh, new 3D print farm that I'm doing uh, this is going to be something that I'll be using down there if you noticed uh, if you walk with me on that video it's a good little walk from the house down uh, to that building and I would say the distance from the house is probably about um, probably about 300 feet uh, somewhere in that area and the Wi-Fi that I have here in the house won't reach that far so I got two of these little units and they'll mount outside and they will extend my Wi-Fi down to that building I'll carry it inside the building and rebroadcast it in there so that my monitoring cameras will work down there and so that I'll have uh, internet capability 
at that location be able to set up a computer down there and stuff so that um, I'll have that capability so that's just one more project in the many projects of getting that uh, 3d print farm going down there I'm still in the cleaning process I've got to the point where the floor itself um, is very scaly. We had a sealer on that concrete and when I painted the room years ago um, I had a lot of overspray on the floor so I thought well I'll just spray the floor so I sprayed it with, with that white paint. Well since then all of that paint's uh, kind of crinkled up and it's coming loose so I'm going to have to clean all that off and get a good uh, bonding primer floor paint and put it on there. So I've talked to some people. So I've got a little bit of work to do and to get the rest of that old paint up I'll probably have to use goof off or goop off and um, get a gallon or two of that and use it. So then once I paint that floor I've got to stay off of it for about four or five days to let it cure. So that's that's gonna push back my timetable a little bit by going through that. But we are moving ahead. I have gotten some more printers in that I might be able to go down there and start setting those up. And um, my resin printers, I've got a little area set up. I want to show you that. So I'm going to try to do a video on that this week and show you what I've come up with for the, the resin printers and how I'm going to handle the ventilation of that. So that's about it for now. Um, thank you for watching and happy 3D printing.